Greetings, you are watching Dugin's Guideline. Today we will be discussing the phenomenon of transhumanism. Yes, I'll take transhumanism for 500, Alex. The trend of transhumanism is gaining popularity across the world, first and foremost in the West, where it originated. Its symbol is a circle with the letter H for human and the plus sign, H plus. Because H plus X equals banana. The supporters of this trend enthusiastically accept all modern technology and take the idea of progress to its logical conclusion. I'm not so sure whether it's really the logical conclusion. It's a conclusion, it's a possible conclusion, but I wouldn't say that it's the logical conclusion. In their opinion, the enhancement of the technology is leading humanity to a state in which more perfect beings can be artificially created out of the human species. Sure, that can happen in the future, or it has the potential to happen in the future, but why is that the logical conclusion of progress? This is to be achieved by refining all parts of the human body by means of replacing them with artificial attachments that are indistinguishable from body parts and the internal organs. This includes the technological simulation of consciousness or registration of consciousness in different receivers, the cartography or mapping of the brain. And this is bad because... The latest discoveries in the genome structure allow organisms to be corrected and their quality to be enhanced on a fundamental level. Are you trying to avoid a Gattaca kind of thing? Well, no, that's, that's not going to be his argument. H plus is a new level of humanity which will be free from disease, imperfections, and will ultimately achieve physical immortality. If that becomes possible, and if that does become possible, why is that bad? Or is it because it clashes with your traditionalism? The body will be able to be changed or corrected, and at some point even printed by 3D printers. Virtual networks will become humans' new habitat and will gradually come to completely replace our normal reality. Compared to H+, the utopias uh, or dystopias of the lawnmower man or matrix will become something archaic and overcome. Transhumanism is not simply a pastime for eccentrics, designers, or technological progress fanatics. It is the result of the last few centuries over the course of which humanity has come to seriously believe in the myth of progress and evolution. Oh boy, the myth of progress and the myth of evolution. Great. You and DeVos should get together. Oh wait, excuse me, DeVos. H plus is the final logical conclusion of the modern era of modernity. The main idea of modernity was liberating man from any and all constraints. And apparently you're very much against that. First, they started with religion, tradition, and case society, and then they fell the state and nation in favor of civil society. And apparently that's bad, and tradition is just so much better. Then they abolished the normative view of gender and the normal family, legalizing the most diverse forms of gender mutations and perversions. Because apparently we have to make sure that everything is approved by God. And all of this took place against the backdrop of the technological development of new form of production, computers and advances in programming and the synthesis of new materials. Ideology and technology gradually merged 
into something one and indivisible. With liberty and justice for all, and subtract the part in the United States about under God that was, you know, added in the 50s. Technological progress has become an ideological factor, and ideology has in turn become nothing other than technology. Hence, the replacement of classical political forms with spin doctors. You heard it from him, right? You know, unless it's traditional, it's spin doctoring. Now we have come to the final phase of humanity's liberation from its limitations. In the West, there is already no longer any religion, political hierarchies, normal families, or state in the fullest sense of the word. That's news to me, especially here in the United States. Yeah, that's news to me, especially after Trump got elected. Yeah, that's, that's news to me. All borders have been completely crossed, transgressed. Now all that remains is one final step, overcoming the boundaries of the human species itself. I don't know whether we'll ever actually achieve that, but if we could, why is that bad? Well, because God, right? This is H+, the last word of liberalism. Transhumanism is no bizarre side product of technological development. It is the logical end of the modern age. Well, it might be the logical end of, of this technological age that we have, but to connect that solely with liberalism, I mean, unless you think that uh, we should go back in time and, well, I mean, I guess that's kind of what traditionalism likes to do. How far back do you want to go? 50 years, 100 years? Should we start living in caves? I mean, how far back do you think we should go? According to modernity, we were supposed to reach the age of cyborgs, hybrids, mutants, and chimeras, and now we have arrived. A lot of people have hoped that we could reach the age of Aquarius, so to speak. Now, I know that there's a lot of woo behind that and some mumbo jumbo behind that, but the concept of us becoming more enlightened uh, seems to be a valid one. You know, maybe, you know, maybe through technology we might become more enlightened in that way. But, you know, that would take people away from God and you've got to do everything you can to stop that because, you know, cabbage. Of course, the worst majority of humanity today are not ready to become cyborgs or mutants. But no one asked the majority of mankind. All history is made by elites. Well, I mean, history is written by the survivors. It's written by those who are victorious. So I suppose you could say it's written by the elites. Um, I think it's a little bit of a stretch, but uh, when it comes to society being ready for this or that, you can only push things so far, as I've discussed before. And when you push too far, uh, there will be a push back. Now, I suppose that you feel that you need to push back against this stuff that's going on. And I suppose that's fair. From your perspective, what's coming up seems to be terrible. From other perspectives, it's just like, What's the big deal? Well, to those who are religious, uh, you're seeing something scary. To those who are not religious, well, I mean, the scary part that those who are not religious see is the potential of a Gattaca kind of reality, where a kind of caste system could come into place based off of the way that we've technologically uh, altered ourselves or even on you know on the genetic level too you know larger brain capacity uh, uh, more uh, you know people that are smarter than ever that sort of thing that's what those of us who are not religious worry about we don't just you know say well that's bad because it's not traditional now maybe that's not directly your argument but you've never really went in to 
the problems you actually have, other than it's not traditional. So. The masses are never ready for anything, but this means absolutely nothing. They are not ready, they are being prepared, and no one even notices. Transhumanism is inevitable if we accept the main trend of the modern era, faith in progress, development, and the betterment of humanity. So you're essentially saying that you don't believe in the betterment of humanity. And yeah, we should just follow a bunch of rules, follow some dogma, follow an ideology as long as it's your ideology, right? This religion, or rather pseudo-religion of progress, was introduced to Europe and the world by the Enlightenment. This heresy gradually replaced or pushed into the periphery all traditional forms of religion, first and foremost Christianity. It is impossible to stop halfway on this path of progress. Heresy, free thought. <laughs> Saying A, we have to say B, C, D, and all other letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, C, A, L, L, A, T, T. H plus is the last letter. Henceforth, only computer language begins. Zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. The only ones who are on the opposite side of post-humanism are consistent and fundamental traditionalists. Yes, and that's exactly why level-headed, non-religious people are against people like you cramming your traditionalist bullshit down everyone's throats. They reject not only the final mutation, but all of modernity, the very idea of progress and development, the scientific image of the world, and democracy and liberalism. So you're against science, you're against progress, you're against improving the human condition, you're against improving life on this planet, because, you know, tradition and dogma and God's rules we should all live according to that again. So what parts of technology should we drop? You know, how far back in time should, should we go? Like, like I asked earlier, you know. Instead, traditionalists affirmed and affirm God, church, empire, caste, power, and folk customs. Not progress. The modern world is not progress, but the result of absolute decline. So basically, a Christian version of Sharia. You should beat your kids, you should hit your wife, you should, you know, put women in their place, and uh, men should rule the roost, you should have a real, honest patriarchy, and we should try to spread the power of the religion across the globe, and try to take over everything, and that's progress. Okay, that's very, very interesting. It is the kingdom of the Antichrist, fighting against H+, to reject the final transformation dictated by the very logic of the liberal ideology of modernity, while still accepting other aspects of modernity is meaningless. As he refers to the logical conclusion of modernity, I want to point the logical conclusion to those who, in one way or the other, push against modernity. Okay, his type of shit, this crap that he puts out, is the logical conclusion to being against modernity. Now, if you don't want to align with that shit, maybe you should look into what the logical conclusion of your views are. Do you want to promote traditionalism? If so, you know, how far back in time do you want to go? What things do you want to abolish? What kind of totalitarianism do you support? Now, let me be clear about something here. Okay, I have talked negatively about some of the aspects to what technology has done to us. I think there are fair arguments 
against some of what has happened to us. Even as I talk about, you know, Facebook and how everything just seems to be a way to sell technology and it doesn't matter what the negative effects are on society. Hey, as long as they sell things, it's all good, right? There are some very negative things that have that are going on in our society as a result of technology. You know, technology can be used to do good, technology can be used to do bad. Now, there are also some things that we've done throughout time because of industrial technology that we're really fucking things up for our future. Now, I don't imagine that Alex has a problem with uh, industry dumping into, you know, the ocean or, or whatever. Um, has no problem with the destruction of other animals and other life on the planet. You know, as long as we're following God's rules, that's, that's great, you know. But I, I, no, I don't come at this from that sort of perspective. I come at it as, you know, how can we reduce harm? What can we do to reduce harm? So there are, there's a lot of technology that we have right now that we can work towards making it less harmful, less harmful for the environment, less harmful for humans and other life to create, less waste, and I mean like industrial waste, you know, reduced industrial waste. We need to find a way to legally demonize and make expensive. When companies push for making things obsolete, planned obsolescence, to make that kind of thing have fines and things that make companies not want to do it. Um, you know, to try to try to push for companies to make things with quality, something that will last a long time, something that's worth lasting a long time. I mean, we have taken some of this to a whole new level when it comes to trying to keep up with the Joneses. We've we've taken it to a whole new level, and it's with these little bitty things that we hold in our hands. Let's start focusing on trying. Yes, let's have great technology. But let's also focus on making that technology something that can last. You know, let's not create quite as much of this stuff that ends up going to the landfills. Reduce the negative footprint that we leave behind. If you're going to make something, then make it with quality. We used to have those standards. You know, and I hate, I hate to, to bring up these years, but I, I can't, I, I mean, look at, you know, 40s and 50s uh, vehicles. Um, now, they didn't know about some of the stuff that we know about now with uh, like crumple zones and things, but they still built things to be quality, to last a long time, something that you can uh, carry on to further generations. You can, you can give to your, your daughter, your granddaughter, your son, your grandson, things that that can be passed down technology that can be passed down that kind of idea i think we need to come to, to return to that kind of idea but with new stuff don't go back to old technologies try to figure out how to make the new technologies better for everyone and everything on this planet I, I think that we need to try to make sure that some nature areas remain natural. There's a bunch of other areas that I could go into, you know, politically, but um, when I talk about how technology can be bad, um, which is somewhat, you know, this is what this video is related to, um, I wanted to be specific and show, hey, you know, these are the things that I think should be done. You know, it, that is how we could become less controlling, less enslaving, and possibly less manipulative. I don't think we should try to go straight down some particular road. We have things to work on, and as society changes and situations change, we need to keep modifying the road that we're going down. So... You know, if we can achieve some of the things I just talked about when it comes to technology, 
if we can achieve those goals, I don't know what the next goal would be. Um, but by the time our society reaches that level, we would have other answers. My main thing overall is let's try to, uh, you know, if there is a road to go down, and this is a very general road, uh, let's try to reduce harm. Transhumanism is the inevitable tomorrow if we agree with what our today is. If we want to change our fate, we must go back in time and understand where we committed the fatal mistake. There was no fatal mistake made. What you are trying to implement, what you are trying to promote, is a fatal mistake. All the best! You've been watching Dugin's guideline on transhumanism. Holy teachings assert that the devil is capable of almost everything, but he cannot create man. He can only make a parody of man or manufacture his simulacrum. H plus is clearly a scheme of his. One of the things that's particularly concerning about people that seem to have beliefs similar to this Alex guy here is you can ask them, you know, well, if, if we're the main things that God cares about, then what happens if we're we no longer exist. Oh, well, God won't let that happen. <laughs> oh, unless there's end times, and then it's, and then they've got some weird explanation at that point. And you're like, you don't think it's at all possible that we could wipe ourselves off the planet from uh, shit that we've done to the environment. Oh, God won't let that happen. Yeah, I guess some of these people think that we were put here by God to use everything in the ways that God uh, approves of us using it that way. So we can basically push forth a control manipulation and uh, a very, very heavy concept of ownership onto everything. And it's, it's, it'll, it's everlasting. It's, it's, it's eternal like God. It's, it's such a, a ridiculous kind of simple-mindedness that I don't even, you know, in, simple-mindedness in certain areas anyway, and, and gullibility, and some sort the, I mean, humans have this desire for self-preservation. That's, you know, that's just built into us, right? So, it's understandable that we would uh, find it okay that, uh, oh, the, the, some supreme being that created everything uh, looks to us as their most important creation. It's understandable, you know, why people could have those feelings about the importance of humans. But when people use that to promote something that could discontinue the existence of humans, you know, inadvertently, it's, it's, it's pretty weird.